Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about uh, who we appoint as a chazan and also what their intention should be when, when leading us. So the first part is about um, being the chazan is supposed to be like a servant of the community, not not for his own honor and and glory and recognition, etc. Um, if you remember, I talked about uh, Rabbi Melamed's uh, three stage, um, three steps when people are talking in synagogue. And the one time I remember talking in his synagogue was when uh, a cousin of mine hired four um, people who were um, making very long tunes. Uh, and I was upset about it because it was just dragging the prayer along. So I was making a comment to my son and I was shushed. So um, about this, while singing, the chazanim must have kavana for the sake of heaven. But if they prolong their chazanut, their cancellation, and their only intention is to show off their beautiful voices, the Torah writes about them, it raises its voice against me, therefore I hated it. And uh, many prophets talked about the way that our heart is supposed to be for the service. Uh, Jeremiah is a little bit more extreme than Isaiah. Isaiah said, why are you coming to my temple to defile it? Uh, but it's about the same idea that, that if we're not doing it for Hashem's sake, then we're probably doing it for our own selfish recognition. They are using the holy prayer service to arrogantly boast as if on stage. Even a person whose only intent is for the sake of heaven should not excessively extend his cancellation so as not to burden the congregation. Um, I think that today maybe we're a little bit more lenient about this, especially online prayers, um, because um, we're not going anywhere. We're staying at home anyway. But um, but again, we should have that consideration. Uh, while the chanting, the, the prayers of Chazanim are prohibited from repeating any words of the Brachot and Kaddish, because doing so changes the Nusach that the Chazanim established. If the repetition of the words alert, alters the meaning of the bracha, those words are considered to be interruption, hefsek, and therefore the chazan must recite the bracha again from the beginning. However, if the meaning does not change, the dieved, he does not need to recite the bracha again because he did not interrupt its recital with another matter. So I'll just give one example. During Kedusha, um, we're supposed to say the verses from the prophets, uh, from Isaiah, from Ezekiel, and from David, Kadosh, 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 Baruch, Kavod Hashem in Komo, and Dimloch Hashem Lolam, that we have to keep at its exact words and not repeat any of those words. But the in between sentences, like Kavodo and all that, we are allowed to repeat because it's making the Kedusha more meaningful and we can concentrate. At least that's how I feel. And, and I think that uh, Rabbi Mlamed never ever stopped somebody from repeating those words just when verses are repeated um, or, or words in a verse are repeated, uh, that should not be. Um, one last example, Rabbi Hertzfeld uh, about a month ago talked about when we do Hagbah that we shouldn't say the second part um, because that's not part of, of that verse. So it's again about making sure that the verses are complete uh, and, and our kavana is kept. One must be strict not to appoint a singer who is accustomed to singing indecent songs to be a regular chazan or a chazan for the high holidays. Um, I remember the first time that I heard Kedusha in the tune of My Heart Goes On uh, from Titanic. I was a little bit confused, but uh, I don't think that that's an inappropriate song, but um, but that's that's how he ends this uh, section, the Paskim disagree whether or not it is permitted to use melodies of, of offensive songs for prayers and liturgy. In practice, when the congregation is not familiar with the vulgar songs, lyrics, it is customary to be lenient and adjust the melody to suit the prayer. But if the congregation recognizes the song, its tune may not be used for prayer because when people sing it, they will be reminded of the crude theme of the song and their concentration is likely to be disrupted. So uh, every community has to think about what songs are appropriate, what tunes are appropriate. Uh, I know that there's 
quite a few tunes for the Chadadi, but I don't think that any of them are, are from uh, inappropriate songs. But correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I enjoy changing a tune once in a while, uh, if it's, again, from a, from a holy place. Uh, and uh, Rev. Shlomo Kalibach wrote so many tunes uh, that it doesn't matter, like, um, not that it doesn't matter. Basically, we have so many holy tunes and holy songs that we can adjust to our, to our praying and, and make it more beautiful. And so we'll, we'll do one more paragraph about appointing a Fuzan. And um, it is, it is like, um, because we, the Chazan is the Shaliyah Tzibur, he is the emissary of the community. And um, then we have to choose a Chazan that, uh, again, is agreeable and uh, hasn't offended anybody. Um, and definitely not somebody who takes it by force. So the chazan is the emissary of the congregation, and therefore a person is prohibited from taking hold of the chazanut unless he is asked to do so by the congregation or by the gabai as its representative. Hence, man may not respond amen to a person who appointed himself to be chazan against the congregation's wishes. Um, he doesn't bring this, but the achronim after the Ramah, the Ramah was the equivalent of the Shulchan Aruch, uh, the Ashkenazi um, commentaries, but many more, according later, said that uh, it's not appropriate to leave the shul just because the chazan is, is not the one that we wanted, uh, because it, that's publicly insulting somebody and, and embarrassing them. But, um, but Rabbi Melamed says that you're not allowed to respond to men if the person took it by force or without being asked. Uh, when the gabai asks someone in the congregation to lead the prayer service, it is polite to initially decline so as not to appear as one who desires to flaunt his voice. However, when the Gabbai insists, he should prepare himself to ascend, but wait to see if there is another person more appropriate than he. And we talked yesterday about the idea of, of Kaddish and who leads the Kaddish. And, and so this is also something to be considered. If he asked a third time, he should comply and begin to pray. And, and that's also the same law with Teshuva, when somebody asks you for forgiveness three times, uh, it is important to agree. Um, and so it's the same, same idea. A third time is, is really important to remember. However, if an important person asks him to ascend, he should accept immediately, for it is not proper to refuse a distinguished individual. Um, so, you know, your rabbi or the rabbi of the congregation asks you, then for sure, uh, you should immediately go. Additionally, when the Gabbai asks the person who declined in the previous prayer service to ascend, he should consider the second request and ready himself to stand, but wait to see if, that there is no one more appropriate. If asked again, he should confer immediately, because thou, that's time three. If a person is able to lead the prayer service, but declines more than the Chavim instructed, he offends the respect due to the prayer and to heaven, Likewise, a person whom Hashem endowed with a talent for singing and pleasant voice should not decline on Shabbat and festivals, since the prayers on those days are rich with song and melody. And of course, we are comparing it to the service of the Levites in the temple, who did it not because they were asked, but because uh, each one of the 24 families um, had that uh, responsibility. And if a person wasn't uh, able to sing or wasn't able to uh, play a good tune on, on one of the instruments, then they were just asked to be shuarim, uh, people who watch the gates of the temple instead. And the, the Mishnah in Tamid talks about all of that and which families were better for, for what purpose. But, you know, even David uh, in, in Tehillim, uh, out of the 150 Psalms, I think there's... Uh, 10 or 15 different instruments that are mentioned. And so, of course, uh, if you're not good with the drums, uh, you should be with the tambourine or guitar or whatever, whatever it is. And, and that's, that's what he's talking about here because shul is a mikdash me'at, a mini temple. And we'll just end, uh, end with this. If he refuses to pray out of stubbornness or laziness and does not praise Hashem with his voice, it would have been better for him not to have come into the world. That's a very, very strong statement, but Sefer Hasidim was basically trying to give us instructions. Our sages said about 
Navot, the Israelite, who had an exceptionally pleasant voice, that he would ascend to the temple in Jerusalem for the three pilgrimage festivals, and all of Israel would um, would gather to hear him. That one time he stayed home to guard his vineyard. He was punished. Uh, and again, that's uh, way above my payroll because I don't understand Hashem's um, uh, calculations. Uh, but uh, it just be, it's not about the Israelite from Israel, but from the valley of Yisrael, uh, Yud Zayin Reish Ayin Aleph Lamed. So um, that's a famous story about him and King Ahab.